what's up everybody? As you already know, my name is Allison Grace and welcome to my channel. So, I hear you want to be AK. I know it's not that simple and you're just talking to me through a screen, but I figured on this oh so special day that I would give a couple of tips regarding what I think it takes to be an Alpha Kappa Alpha woman. Now, I want to clarify, I am only one member of this sorority. I can't speak for everybody. I can't speak for every chapter. I don't speak on behalf of the sorority. I'm merely speaking from my own personal beliefs. I am part of the electrifying Epsilon Mu chapter, which is at the University of North Texas. I am only one person. I don't decide anything regarding, you know, who's interested. But if you wanted to know my personal perspective, I am more than willing to share some of my beliefs regarding what it takes to be an Alpha Kappa Alpha woman. With regards to basic eligibility, if you can even attempt to try for a spot in intake, I would recommend going to aka1908.com. That has all the information you could possibly need regarding prospective membership. So what the GPA requirement is, hours of service, anything along those lines that are beyond a chapter level, things that are on a national level or on a regional level, you should get those ducks in a row first before anything else because it doesn't matter how many people like you in the chapter if you don't have the grade point average or the community service hours or if you're not accomplishing those things on that checklist nobody can approve you meaning that even if you had all the favor in the world you're not going to get there try to collect as much information as possible that's your best bet you want to go into any questions or go into any circumstance as prepared as possible now, for me, I believe that you should have an established personal brand before you go into that zone of Greek life. Now, what this means is, no, you don't have to own your own business, you don't have to have your own YouTube channel or be like a cult of personality or anything like that. What I mean is you have to know what you stand for and you have to have a positive, impactful presence on your campus. So, for example, I personally was not very active in black UNT life, really at all until my sophomore year, but I was still in the Honors College. Um, I was probably one of few African Americans that would be in my Honors College courses, so I was a form of positive representation. Not necessarily tokenism because I volunteered to be in those courses, but I still represented myself well as an honor student. I was a 4.0 student with one semester exception. And I was active in other orgs, so I was part of UNT Serbs. It was a um, LLC, it's a living learning community uh, for one of the dorms in Rollins, or Rollins specifically. So I was part of the community service org my freshman year. I was part of the student health advisory committee my freshman year. I got to show my face in the community at large and I was doing things that were giving back to UNT as a whole. So even though I wasn't in BSU, I wasn't in PBSO, I wasn't in, I never got to do the Black Steering Experience or anything like that, at the very least, I was still giving back to my community. So the people that were part of Epsilon U knew that I was still active um, in the world. <laughs> and with regards to personal branding, you know, everybody knows that I'm going to get good grades every semester. People might not know me on a personal level, but they know that my academics are always gonna be very well put together, to say the least. And for example, the Epsilon Mu chapter has the highest GPA in all in PhD Greek life. So it makes sense why me being known for having 4.0s almost every semester would fit if you feel like your personal brand matches the brand of the chapter and the brand of the sorority or fraternity at large you have a better chance at potentially finding yourself in a good position i recommend an asset providing perspective what this means is seeing yourself as an asset that's going to improve the organization should you be granted membership a lot of people I've noticed focus on what an org can do for them. And as the chapter president for Alpha Kappa Psi, 
Chi Omega chapter, I've heard a lot of people talk about what AK Psy can bring to them, what Greek life can bring to them, what other people can do for them that improves them. And while it does highlight the assets of the organization, keep in mind, as I mentioned in a previous AKA video, the organization is running just fine without you. So we already know that Alpha Kappa Alpha is an asset. We already know that other organizations are assets. So why would we bring somebody in who's a liability? So I think you should review your conduct, review your brand, and see if you are an asset or a liability. And think about it like this. If every action that you've taken, be it publicly, privately, on social media, or in your classes, were to be tied to the organization you're interested in, would you be proud of that? Your digital footprint never goes away. So even if you delete your Twitter and your Facebook and your Instagram, somebody has a screenshot of something you've said or done in the past. And it doesn't really ever leave, even if you do. So. I want you to go back, think in your head if everything that you've posted aligns with your organization or the organization you're interested in, excuse me, and if it does, okay, you're in the clear, keep doing what you're doing, but if it doesn't, you might want to reevaluate. And of course, everybody grows, everybody matures, but don't be surprised if something inappropriate that you did in recent times where you should have had the cognitive functioning to know not to do that sort of thing gets pulled up. And you have to answer for that. I believe you should have solid planning capabilities. I'll be honest with you, intake is not an easy process. Becoming Greek is not easy. And this goes beyond being an AKA. I think that being in any form of Greek life, even Alpha Kappa Psi, which is a professional org and is a completely separate council, completely separate, se uh, separate set of rules, it's not easy to join these organizations. They have their procedures, they have their intakes, they have their processes, and you can't expect it to be easy to get letters that people have been uh, building and cultivating for over a century or for as long as they've existed. So I believe that you should have a good grasp of planning and multitasking because I went through my intake process in fall 2019. So I had to balance my classes. I had to balance a job. I had to balance being the VP of administration for the Kyle Mega chapter for Alpha Kappa Psi. And I had to manage being the VP for the Student Health Advisory Committee all while going through that. I can't talk about the, the intricacies of intake, but I can tell you that you have to commit your full focus to it, but that does not mean that you drop everything else because if you drop everything else, all those obligations that you had prior, they're still gonna be there as soon as you finish. Yeah, you get to have your probate. Yeah, you get to, you know, show out and all that stuff and then the bills are waiting right on the counter and then your orgs all fall apart. And I don't really think that that's a, that's a good memory to have. So definitely no how to plan your time out uh, before you make the decision to try to pursue um, eligibility for intake. The things that I feel helped me the most were those aspects because spring 18 line, the only people I knew on that line on a personal level were people that had already graduated. Knowing people who have graduated does not increase your chances of being part of intake. Now, in all fairness, there are brothers of Alpha Kappa Psi who later became members of Alpha Kappa Alpha. So they might have been my brothers first, but because I was very, it was very clear that I was interested in being an AKA, there was a level of distance. So, you know, it, they couldn't engage me in the way that my other brothers could because if you know that there's a perspective, you know, there's, there's just certain boundaries and I personally don't ever want to get somebody else in trouble. I don't want to get anybody in trouble for anything that was perceived as inappropriate. And you, you just can't have the same type of relationship because it is so easy for it to get kind of uh, muddy. So, you know, what the first thing that I think of is some of the controversy that I had in my business fraternity when my partner rushed 
because there could be accusations of favorable treatment because I was, I'm the chapter president, one of the pledges is my partner, is that appropriate? Now, granted, I like to believe that I treated him like I treated any pledge, but there's still that potential for controversy. And while Alpha Kappa Psi and Alpha Kappa Alpha are both non-hazing organizations, um, D9 Greek Life has been heckled or harassed or flagged for alleged hazing or hazing that has happened in the past. And it's very easy for chapters and organizations as a whole to be you know, accused of inappropriate conduct. Whereas Alpha Kappa Psi is a little bit more under the radar. So there's not this huge widespread problem of, okay, if a chapter gets uh, accused of hazing, now the whole org is going down and everybody's got to freak out, not even PR damage control. Most people, unfortunately, don't know as much about Alpha Kappa Psi as they might know about Alpha Kappa Alpha, at least within the spheres of the, the communities that I know. So the controversy between me and my partner in Alpha Kappa Psi wasn't really a big deal. The chapter wasn't really, you know, up in arms about it. Maybe we had a couple of spit spats here and there. But it didn't become a problem, you know, my partner is, saying my partner's not my brother is probably one of the most disgusting things I've ever said. Don't take it personally if the members of an organization are being hostile towards you. It's just because, like, there are people out there who have caused problems and they're un it's unwarranted. So it's for your protection, it's for their protection, it's for the organization's protected protection. It's a mutually symbiotic sort of thing. I didn't have any connections. My mom is not EM. My mom is uh, Mu Chi, which is Spelman College. So completely separate thing. Plus my mother pledged in the 80s and it was pledging, not intake. <laughs> so her whole experience is different. And she went to an HBCU. So my mom couldn't help me either. None of my family friends could help me. They all pledged either, you know, at uh, Boston University, Spelman other places not UNT <laughs> so um, I was not to say an outsider but just kind of your typical student not really active in black Greek left did not know any of the popular people all my friends all my closest friends are GDIs and all my closest friends are if they're not an Alpha Kappa Psi more than likely they're not in Greek life at all. So it's not like anybody knew anything. It's just, like I mentioned before, I met the right person who decided to tell me because they quote unquote felt like I deserved to know. Then they didn't make it. And then I took it from there. I know it's like, you have to be in the sorority to be an Alpha Kappa Alpha woman. But remember that the people who were in the sorority were once perspectives too, or were once interest. So, you know, those of you who are out there who are interested, it, you know, there may be something in there that is in alignment with Alpha Kappa Alpha women. You might not be an Alpha Kappa Alpha woman because you're not in a sorority, but you have the qualities of it. And I can't help you through your journey because you gotta figure it out by yourself, but I hope that this at the very least gives you an idea of what qualities or how to approach developing yourself in a way that might increase your chances of getting into intake or being eligible for what you seek. If that helps, please like, comment, and subscribe. I make Greek videos from time to time, but if you guys really like them, just let me know. If you ask me a question, the worst I could say is I can't talk about that. Nothing wrong, I won't hold that against you. There are many questions I had that I tried to ask my mother and my mother couldn't even answer. So. Don't worry about it, it's okay. Not everybody's like that, but at the very least, I'm always gonna keep an open mind. Um, so feel free to reach out if you need anything, but until next time, have a wonderful day. Bye.